Perform hand hygiene and apply appropriate PPE before entering the patient's room. Introduce yourself and ask for your patient's full name and date of birth. If in a hospital setting, verify the accuracy of this information with the patient's ID bracelet. If in a clinic setting where no bracelet is present, make sure the information the patient gives you matches previous documentation. Explain to the patient what you will be doing. In this case, I'll explain to my patient that I'm here to perform a full abdominal physical assessment. I'll tell them that I will be touching the abdomen and listening with my stethoscope. Always let your patient know that they have the right to refuse at any point and ask for their consent to continue. Make sure you have gathered all the relevant information needed before starting any physical assessment. In this case, I would have already done either a full health history or focus abdominal history as well as performed a PQRST IUA. All physical assessments must be done directly on the skin, whether you are inspecting, palpating, percussing, or auscultating. It is never to be done over clothing. For the purposes of this video, some assessments may be done over clothes. I will ask my patient to lie in bed and make sure they are comfortable. The head of the bed must be flat. If my patient's abdomen is tense, I can ask them to bend their knees to help relax their abdominal muscles. I will raise the height of the bed so that I'm comfortable and not hurting my back. Before I start inspection, I need to ensure that my patient has recently voided and if not, give them a chance to go to the bathroom. Make sure you have a good view of the full abdomen. The patient may need to adjust their shirt or pants. First, I will look at the contour of the abdomen by keeping my head slightly higher than the abdomen and looking straight across. I will note the contour as either scaphoid, flat, rounded, or protuberant. In this case, my patient's abdomen is flat. The abdomen is symmetrical. No bulges, nodules, or masses are present. The umbilicus is midline and inverted. The overall skin color is congruent with the rest of the body. No scars or striae are present. Note any piercings. In this case, my patient does have a small piercing which looks well intact with no signs of infection. I'm able to note the pulsations of the aorta, which are normally visible. I will also note any visible peristalsis, which may or may not be seen. I'm able to see some respiratory movement, although this is usually more easily seen in men. I will ask my patient to do a sit-up to evaluate the rectus abdominis muscles. They appear to be well intact with no signs of hernia. I want to make sure to auscultate before palpating as to not increase bowel sounds. Also, if I hear a brewery during auscultation, I would avoid percussion and palpation. I will use my diaphragm starting in the right lower quadrant at the ileocecal valve. I'll move clockwise to the right upper quadrant. Left upper quadrant. And finishing in the left lower quadrant. My patient's bowel sounds are normal, as I'm hearing between 5 to 30 bowel sounds per minute. The sounds are neither hypoactive nor hyperactive. They are high-pitched gurgling and cascading in nature. Next, I will listen for vascular sounds with the bell for any bruise. First, I will listen to the abdominal aorta located four finger breadths above the umbilicus. I will listen to the left and right renal arteries located two finger breadths above the umbilicus at the left and right midclavicular line respectively. Next, I will listen to the left and right iliac arteries located two finger breadths below the umbilicus at the left and right midclavicular line respectively. Lastly, I will listen over the left and right femoral arteries, which is where you would find the femoral pulse.
No breweries were present at any of the auscultation points. Next, I will percuss in a clockwise format, again starting in the right lower quadrant and percussing two to three points in each quadrant. In general, timpani will predominate over the abdomen. Over the gastric bubble, hyperresonance is heard. Over the bladder, timpani is heard since my patient has just voided. If it were full, I would be hearing dullness. Next, I will determine my patient's liver span. I will percuss along the right midclavicular line. I will start within lung resonance and percuss downwards until I hear the sound changes from resonance to dullness. This is usually in the fifth intercostal space. I will mark this spot. Then, I will percuss in the abdomen where I hear timpani and continue to percuss upwards until the sound changes from timpani to dullness. I will mark this point. I will measure the distance between these two points. My patient's liver span is 9.5 centimeters, which is normal for an adult between 6 to 12 centimeters. Next, I will percuss along the left mid-axillary line. I'm hearing splenic dullness between the 9 to 11th ribs, which is a normal finding. I will save kidney percussion for last, as this requires my patient to sit up. I will start with light palpation in all four quadrants, keeping the same clockwise format starting in the right lower quadrant. I will use the first four fingers of one hand, moving in a circular motion and lifting my fingers as I move on to the next point. I will push about one centimeter deep and make sure not to drag my fingers. There are no masses noted and the patient denied any tenderness or pain. If I knew in advance that the patient had pain before starting the abdominal assessment, I would save the painful quadrant last for light palpation. For example, if the patient had pain in the right lower quadrant, I would start by palpating in the right upper quadrant, then left upper quadrant, then left lower quadrant, and end with the right lower quadrant. Next, I will move on to deep palpation. I can use the same technique as with light palpation, but pressing deeper between 5 to 8 centimeters deep. Alternatively, I could use the bimanual technique where the bottom hand is feeling the abdomen and the top hand is applying the downwards pressure. If I knew that the patient had pain in a certain quadrant, I would avoid deep palpation in that specific quadrant altogether. No abnormal enlargement, tenderness, or masses were present. Next, I will palpate the liver. With my left hand, I will support under my patient's back. With my right hand positioned vertically, I will push under the right costal margin as I ask my patient to take a deep breath in. Upon inspiration, I was able to feel a firm ridge underneath my fingertips. If you do not feel anything, it is possible that the patient's liver is not palpable. My patient was able to take in a full deep breath without stopping and there was no pain produced upon palpation. If my patient had inspiratory arrest due to pain, this is a positive Murphy sign which suggests cholecystitis. Next, I will palpate the aorta which is located above the umbilicus slightly left of midline. I can use the ulnar surface of both my hands or my thumb and index finger of one hand. I will approximate the size of the aorta, which should measure between 2.5 to 4 centimeters wide. In this case, my patient's aorta was approximately 3 centimeters. I will end my assessment by performing special tests. First, I will perform rebound tenderness, also known as Bloomberg sign. I will apply pressure into one quadrant with my hand at a 90 degree angle. I will press slowly and deeply and then quickly release. If pain is experienced in any of the four quadrants, this is a positive rebound tenderness or Bloomberg sign. You should never be pressing in a quadrant where your patient is already experiencing pain. Rosing sign is suggestive of appendicitis and happens when palpation of the left lower quadrant elicits pain in the right lower quadrant. The next test I will perform is the ilia psoas test. With my patient supine, I will have them raise their right leg and I will apply pressure on the lower part of the right thigh as the patient tries to withstand my resistance. 
If performing this maneuver elicits right lower quadrant pain, it is a positive ileus psoas test and indicative of appendicitis. Lastly, I will percuss the kidneys with my patient sitting up. I will use indirect fist percussion. I will place one hand on each kidney at the costal vertebral angle over the 12th rib. Then I will thump my hand with the ulnar surface of my fist. I'm not listening for a specific sound, but rather noticing if my patient has any pain. After completing your health history and physical assessment, you will be able to identify your nursing care priority, provide relevant teaching and nursing interventions to help the patient with their situation. You should also be able to identify strengths and challenges from the information gathered. Include follow-up instructions that demonstrate a collaborative approach with the patient. You want to make sure that you and your patient have an equal understanding of the next steps. Make sure to thank your patient and ask them if they have any questions. Ensure they are comfortable and have the call bell in place if in a hospital setting. Also make sure to bring the bed back to the lowest position. If in a hospital setting, you may put the bed rails back up as well if your patient requires it. Make sure to wash your hands after having been in contact with your patient in their environment.